Hello, this is Tiffany Almeida with Pretty in Paper Crafts, and I'm going live with you every Sunday for Coffee and a Card. I hope you have a fabulous drink in hand, and you're ready to craft and make fun three, fun three, three fun projects using the More Than Word stamp set today. Oh look, already some of you are sharing my video, which is absolutely wonderful. Please hit the share button and share it to other people's pages or to your personal page. Um, it helps me in meeting new people, finding people who are looking for a hobby, uh, finding customers and possibly finding new team members. So it's absolutely fabulous. So please hit that share button and I have prizes to give away for those that hit um, the share button. So today I'll be using the More Than Words stamp set. The More Than Words stamp set is part of the celebration coordination and there is obviously a reason why because every single sentiment in this stamp set coordinates with something else just fabulously. And that's why I love this stamp set and I couldn't wait to play with it. So I'll show you three of the ways I was able to use this stamp set. There are many, many more different ways. Aloha Patty! So excited to play bingo with you guys this morning. Looking forward to it. Um, so very excited for this. I'm going to show you the three projects I came up with, but first we need to give away prizes. Woo woo! My favorite part of the day. Um, oh yes, Karen. So then starting tomorrow, there's some new storage solutions that are coming out that everybody can order. Storage for blends, inks, ribbons, um, is it, what am I missing? Stamp sets. Uh, so I'm very, very excited. The storage solutions, I definitely need some organization on my desk. So I'm super excited to get those starting tomorrow. So April 1st, new day, new awesome specials. But today we are celebrating the end of celebration and saying goodbye to all of our favorite free things. All right. Can you guys see this? This is also the last day to get my free gift in March. So if you place a $50 order with me in March, not only do you get a free celebration item, but you also get my make and takes from my Facebook Live and my free gift, which is our candle embellishments. I love these candle embellishments. They're adhesive on the back and they are so cute. They come in gold and silver and they go with everything. So make sure you go on to my online store and you place a $50 order by the end of tonight. And please don't wait till the last minute because you know what happens when you wait till the last minute, right? There's computer glitches. You can't find the item number. You think you hit submit, but you accidentally didn't. All those crazy, crazy things that happen when we wait till the very last minute. So please don't wait till the last minute. Go on and place your order while you listen to me do crafts. <laughs> something but don't wait till the very last minute because then sad things happen I know from experience because I'm a procrastinator all right okay so let's show you guys today's projects here again is a stamp set oh bye Amanda happy happy fun birthday party I don't know whose birthday it is but hope you have a fun time all right so you guys can see this stamp set for me um, has some really really fun little sentiments and I think my most favorite out of all of them is this one, it says, because adulting is hard. Amen to that, whoever came up with this sentiment, because adulting is hard. So we've got coffee and chocolate, two of my most favorite things. Um, and if I'm having a bad day, that is the way to my heart, coffee and chocolate. Those things make everything better. And so I wanted to um, make this cute little holder. And um, so I found a an awesome video tutorial to how to make this. And so then I kind of made my own kind of design. I have a link referencing the demonstrator's video. So if you guys want to see that on my blog post, you can go there and see that. The second thing, okay, this is, I absolutely love this, you guys. This is a really fun technique. And I have, I'm a sucker for rainbows and I love our 2018, 2020 in colors. And this is using the birthday sentiment and the wishes stamp. And it is on the um, glossy cardstock. And I used Versamark and then I used ink daubers and colored the color across it. So I can't wait to show you this is so super cute. Um, so this is a super cool um, technique. I learned it from um, one of our art artisan um, members. I can't remember. I think it's Jen Picard. 
Does that name sound familiar? I have her linked in my video as well. She made a card like this with this glossy paper. Um, and so I kind of put my twist on it and I can't wait to show you guys this cool technique. I did not know this was a thing and it's so cool. All right, the last but not least is this absolutely adorable Easter box. So as you guys saw, I did my Fable Friends class yesterday, prepped and cut those so they can go out in the mail. Um, and like I said, somebody won my Fable Friends tutorial that goes along with it. Um, but this is a little treat that I included in all of their boxes. It's one of those pulled out boxes and inside is a Junior Mints eggs. So I'm um, having it upside down, Junior Mint eggs. So I love Junior Mints. I don't know if you guys love Junior Mints, but Junior Mints are one of my all-time favorite candies, but they have them specially made to shape like an egg. Like they are literally shaped like an egg and it's so cute. So I got each of them a box of those Junior Mints and I put it inside this adorable box. And I used my little Fable Friend Easter Bunny and I put her in a basket. And did you know that there's a sentiment in More Than Words just for Easter? So there's a pretty little font Easter. There's even a New Year's and a Christmas. So you could do Easter wishes, Christmas wishes, New Year wishes, um, lots of fun birthdays. Uh, you got birthday wishes, uh, the word bravery in this beautiful font. So this stamp set is so versatile because you can use it for so many different occasions. Um, and so I just want to show you how I use these Junior Mints. Now don't mind the crushed ones because I think my cat stepped on it and he crushed one of the Junior Mints. But this is one of the projects we did for the Fable Friends class. And so I did my little duck and she's got her little eggs in here. And there's these are those Junior Mint eggs. Don't they, aren't they cool? They're shaped, look at that. They're shaped like eggs. It's so cool, speckled eggs even. Okay, so these are our projects today. What do you guys think? Are you very excited? Okay, Karen, we'll see you later. Thank you for watching. All right, let's go ahead and start with my favorite, which is the coffee and chocolate. Love coffee and chocolate, makes my soul happy. And here's the things that we're gonna need for it. So you will need to use a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. If you don't have 12 by 12 cardstock, you'll um, need to use a piece of designer series paper. Um, that's 12 by 12, but I had Whisper White, which is about the only color paper I have in 12 by 12. So it's cut by, it's cut at 12 inches by two inches, okay? And then we also need a piece of, I have a piece of designer series paper. Now I am using, this is another celebration item. This is the Painted Seasons designer series paper. How many of you have a pack of this Painted Seasons designer series paper? And how many of you have more than one pack? This is so awesome that you can get this for free with a $50 purchase and you can get it separate than the stamp set. So if you already got the stamp set and paper bundle, you can just get more of the paper, which is so cool. Um, oh yeah, look at all those thumbs up. Okay, so this paper is absolutely my favorite and I love this Grapefruit Grove design on one side. So this measures seven inches by one and seven eighths. Okay, and so we're gonna need to do some scoring on this piece of Whisper White. I'm gonna get my scoreboard out. Does anybody else, when I put my scoreboard away, my stylus always falls out. I always have to find my stylus. Okay, so I have my stylus, I have my piece. We are going to score at half an inch, two and a half inches, four inches, six inches, seven and a half, and 11 and a half. Okay, so that's it for the scoring. Now, let's go ahead and burnish these edges so you guys can see these score lines a little bit better. So we've got, we're just going to fold these and I will show you, it makes a really, I don't think I did this right. Did I not score at the right length? I think I scored wrong. Because 11 and a half should be a lot further. Oh, I scored at 11 instead of 11 and a half. Whoopsie. That is actually going to be okay. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay. All right, so let's keep scoring or burnishing. You know, it's really hard for me to multitask, like chewing gum and walking at the same time 
or talking and scoring at the same time. So I didn't score this one because, or I didn't burnish this one because it was a mistake. We're gonna leave that. Whoopsie. Okay, so on the side that has the two, the half inch score and then the one and a half, right? No, two and a half. So this little section right here, we're going to hole punch with the one and three quarter inch hole punch. And we're actually going to create a little template. So I already punched a piece um, of gray cardstock and I punched it out so I could glue it down as a little template. And you definitely want to do this because you don't have much give, give on the sides and things. So you want to make sure you're punching in the right section. So just glue that to the center of your cardstock so you have a little template. All right, so now that I put that on, I can just slide this in and know exactly where I need to punch. Boom, and then I have this perfect circle, perfectly centered, okay? All right, so here's how this works. So the really cool thing that you can do is actually adhere this by gluing it down, like laying it down flat. So if you fold right after the circle, you want adhesive on this little half inch strip. So I'm gonna, you guys, I ran out of tearing tape. Sad, sad day. Tearing tape is coming. It's gonna be here on Monday, so I'm going through tearing tape withdrawals. So I have to use my liquid glue for boxes. I much rather prefer using tearing tape, but for today, I have to use liquid glue. So we'll have to be a little bit more patient as we wait for things to dry. Okay, so again, you're gonna fold right after that circle and then you're gonna fold on this score line that's right next to um, that little tab. You're gonna just lay it flat and it should line up just perfectly and glue right where it needs to glue. Right at the edge of this second, this score line here. Okay, and then when you open it, it's going to pop up to be this perfect box. See that? It's just perfectly um, where we need it to be. And then you get to put one of my favorite things inside, which is a Starbucks Pike Place Roast Coffee. This is my favorite, I always get it at Costco. If I give this to you, it means I love you because I'm giving you the good stuff. <laughs> okay, so here's how you do that. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is we have our Ferrero, Ferrero Rocher. Now let me tell you, this is really hard for me not to just open all of these and eat them right now. It's taken so much, um, control for me not to eat this. Now, I'm gonna put a glue dot at the top of my Ferrero Rocher because I want it to kind of be held inside of this little dome, but I don't want it to stick to the bottom because you know when you go to use this coffee, if that little glue dot sticks to the um, K cup, you're gonna have a problem with the needle as it's poking through to try and make your coffee. So let's put the adhesive at the top and then we're gonna fold this over and then you're gonna glue it down, okay? And you have a little bit of leeway. So my every K-cup is shaped a little bit differently. So what you just care about is um, putting this edge over. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go all the way to the score line because you have a little bit of wiggle room. That's why you can see that it really doesn't matter that I did this accidentally, um, accidental score line, because I didn't fold it, okay. So we're gonna put some adhesive. My K cup is a little bit bigger, so I can't go all the way down to that line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a thin line of adhesive here at the edge of my box here. And then I'm just gonna fold this over and hold it down. And I don't want I don't want there to be a curve at my bot on the bottom of my box, so I'm going to flip this over and just you know because I'm using liquid glue, I kind of have to just hold it there and kind of love on it for a second. Yeah, tear and tape three at a time. No joke, Terry. Like I'm crying. I thought I had an extra one, but I didn't. And so, anyways, I can survive, you guys. I can live without tear and tape till Monday. Psych, just kidding, I can't. I'm gonna have a breakdown. Okay, so here's the uh, first part of our box. So this is really, really easy. You guys see how quickly that came together? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this strip of designer series paper and we're actually gonna wrap it all the way around the box. Now, this one is a little bit taller than this one. 
because the K-cup is a little bit different shaped. This one is not as good coffee as this one. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're not actually not gonna be able to go all the way down to the bottom, but that's okay because there's a little bit of an edge on the sides, and so we're just gonna kind of match that and kind of frame it in. All right, so I'm gonna put adhesive all on the outside, or all around the kind of outside of my designer series paper. Now I am using liquid glue for this because I want a little bit of wiggle room. So this is good. Definitely want to use liquid glue for this because you're going to lay it down and you're just going to work it around till you get to the back. And voila, boom, perfect. Okay, do you see how I did that? So the bottom is flat, and then I've wrapped the paper around the top. Now, you guys are thinking, what the heck, you haven't put your handle on yet. But we actually wanna put our handle on after the fact. So now we're gonna get, I have a piece of Whisper White 1 8 ribbon, which, let me, guys, let me tell you about my curse of the ribbon, okay, all week. Every time I grab a spool of ribbon to use, I run into the end of the spool. No joke, this is as much ribbon as I have left of this ribbon. And it happened with like four rolls of ribbon that I used um, yesterday. And I was like, what the heck? Every spool of ribbon that I touch has run out. I'm like, I have a ribbon epidemic right now. No ribbon whatsoever. So like I'm using scraps. So this is what I have left of it. So we're gonna hopefully be able to make it work. Um, but the first thing we need to do is take our 1 8 inch circle punch and we're gonna put it in about a half an inch in from the top, whoop, push my Ferrero Rocher out of the way. Okay, so we're just gonna punch that, put our little glue dot back, and we're going to go to this side and punch that, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be so precise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick the ribbon through on one side, through the inside. Come on up, and I love the 1 8 ribbon because it's so tiny, it fits through a 1 8 hole so well. Come on. And if you need to, you can use your little piercing tool to push it through, which I should probably be doing right now. Okay, so here's the dealio. And we've got this handle here. So we're gonna take the ribbon to one side, through the, through the inside, okay? Take it through the inside, and we gotta tie a knot at the end. Now the knot has to be pretty close to the end because when we pull it up, it's gonna have some slack and um, we don't want a giant handle. So we'll just tie a knot here. Yay, it's happening. Okay, so I'm gonna try and slip this knot up as high as possible. And I'm just gonna cut off the end here. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull this ribbon through and look, you've got this cute little handle. Look at that, so cute. So now we have our little handle. Let's go ahead and decorate the front of our box. So we have some crumb cake ribbon, which crumb cake just felt right. So we've got our ribbon because crumb cake and um, um, Grapefruit Grove are really pretty colors together. I really like them. So I have to tie my bows upside down. So we'll just tie and see how I don't cut my ribbon off my spool. That's how you waste ribbon. If you tie it while it's still attached, then you can cut it off where it needs to go. I need to give myself a little bit more length. This ribbon's really nice. I love this um, weave. It's called a classic weave ribbon, I believe. And I really love the texture and the ease to tie these pretty flat bows. Okay, so then we can trim off our extra. Okay, and then center that a little bit. All right, so there's our pretty bow. And then we are gonna put our little sentiment. So this is like, if you love me, you're gonna give me this sentiment or you're gonna give me this treat because these words speak for me. I'm a little bit whiny and adulting is hard sometimes. And sometimes I just need some chocolate and coffee. So I'm using that because adulting is hard and we'll put it on a block 
Oh my goodness, Tiffany Almeida. So I'm ready for bingo and I have literally used up all of my blocks for bingo because I want to be prepped and ready to go. So I left myself no blocks for Facebook Live. So I have to get out my spares. <sighs> the joys. All right, so we're going to be using spare blocks sparingly today. All right, so I have adulting is hard and a scrap of whisper white. Okay, and I stamped this in crumb cake. So let's do that. Right, Rhonda? Adulting is so hard. I wanna be a kid again and go back to naps. I love naps so much now. Okay, and the other thing we have is early espresso and we're gonna stamp some um, coffee beans. So you see these little coffee beans? We're gonna stamp that also. And where do I get my coffee beans? None other than one of my most favorite stamp sets ever, the Coffee Cafe, has the little coffee beans. So we'll get our little coffee beans out. And I'm gonna put this on the other side and I'm gonna stamp it with early espresso right there, okay? Now, Two things. One is we need to punch out our adulting is hard, and we're gonna use the one and one and a quarter inch circle punch. Okay, so just like that, and then to kind of back it, we're gonna use Grapefruit Grove and our one and three eighths inch circle scallop punch, which is just slightly bigger than our one and a quarter. Okay, so then the only thing left to do is cut out our little coffee beans. And guess what, you guys? There is a framelit for that in the coffee cups framelits, which coordinate with the coffee, um, coffee cafe stamp set. There is a little coffee bean, which will cut out our coffee. I love framelits. Amen for framelits. All right, so let's get our big shot in. That's all we have to cut is just the one little coffee bean. So we'll get this guy in here. I guess I need the handle on this side, huh? Look at my plate, you guys. It just totally changed colors from all of the big shot work. I want you to know that my children think that I am the master of torture because I make them use the big shot and they do not understand the joy of big shot. They think it's a torture device, which I'm not above punishing them with big shot work. Like I always have big shot work to do. So you know what? Like I don't even spank anymore. I'm like, go get the big shot. You know what's coming until they figure out that that's not really a punishment <laughs> that we need to bring out the big guns. All right. So let's go ahead and glue our stuff together here. Where am I going to Onstage, Cindy? I'm going to Salt Lake. I am so excited for Onstage. Those of you who don't know what Onstage is, it is a Stampin' Up! convention that Stampin' Up! demonstrators get to go to twice a year. And at the one in April, um, they have several different locations in the United States. And um, you get to go for a day of crafting and swapping and you get to see the new catalog that's coming out in June before anybody else. We get free stamp sets. We get to craft with the new stamp sets. We get training. We get um, recognition for titles, advancements, and all kinds of fun things. It is just an absolute blast. So there you go, guys. Isn't this adorable? Isn't this the perfect little treat? Adulting is hard. Um, you could make someone's day, put a smile on their face, give them some coffee and chocolate. Just adorable. And wouldn't these be great for a craft fair? So fun for a craft fair. All right, so those, let's put those aside. Let's go ahead and move on to that really, really cool technique that I was telling you about by that Jen Picard technique. Okay, so let's bring that project out. Oh good, look at the hearts. You guys like it, yay. I know, Cindy, it was so amazing meeting you in person. It was so fun. Oh my gosh, Orlando, um, on stage in Orlando in November was mind blowing. It was so much fun. All right, <clears throat> so remember I told you about that ribbon epidemic? It keeps going with this card. 
I used um, the Pineapple Punch Ribbon for this card. I thought the yellow went really well. And lo and behold, I was at the very end of my Pineapple Punch Ribbon. Awesome! So the only other in-color ribbon I had was Call Me Clover. <laughs> so this card is going to be in green, but this card is in yellow. So we'll just get to see the two different colors. Because these five are in colors from last year. So we have our lovely lipstick, our Grapefruit Grove, Pineapple Punch, Call Me Clover, and Blueberry Bushel. All right, so for this card, we have a piece of Thick Whisper White for our card base. We have a piece of that glossy paper, that glossy paper that kind of looks like photo paper. Stampin' Up! does sell packs of these in our annual catalog, so go check them out. They're really, really cool. And then I have a piece of Call Me Clover that's going to matte that when we're done. All right, so... Here's the technique. Here's the dealio on this technique, okay? First thing you do, and I didn't even know this was a thing, so I learned this just alongside you, is that you can stamp a glossy paper with the Versamark ink, okay? So I took my big wishes stamp. Oh, Sonia, it'll be so much fun. I'm excited for you. That's awesome. First time on stage is mind blowing. I remember the first time I went and it was amazing. You are going to have a blast. Okay. Remember I told you guys we are low on stamping blocks so we will make this work. Okay, so we have our wishes stamp and our Versamark and we're just gonna stamp this across our glossy paper starting at the top. And you're just going to um, just do one right after the other. And it is kind of hard to see, but I can see the verse mark. It is slightly different color than the glossy paper. Now, have a little grace with yourself. It's not going to be straight. It's not going to be perfect. But did you guys see all my imperfections when you first looked at it? Probably not. So we'll be okay. So you just do the best you can, okay? No one is perfect. All right, so let's do this one. You can see that I'm offsetting each row. I don't start stamping in the same place every time. So let's do like this. Remember, we need enough room for five rows. And hopefully I don't screw up big time because if I do screw up, guess where my label's gonna go? Right over my big accident. I didn't really give myself that much room because I'm gonna have a little space for my fifth row, but that's okay. That's all right. There is no right or wrong, right? It's whatever we create. So just go with it and give yourself a little bit of grace when you're creating, okay? Just try something new. All right, so we've got all five rows of wishes. This is the cool part, you guys. I thought, I'm like, this isn't gonna work. This is going to just smear the verse mark everywhere. Oh, fun, Jenny. That'll be awesome. She's kidnapping a friend. That's sweet. It's always more fun with a friend, but even if you go by yourself, there are so many friendly people that will just adopt you and take you right into their little groups. And you'll meet so many people. It's so much fun. All right, so here's our colors, right? So red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So these are our in colors. And I have daubers in each of the colors that we're going to do each row with, okay? Have you guys used daubers? Has everybody used a dauber? these sponge daubers. If you haven't, you really need to. They come in packs of five or six. They're super cheap, but they are just an amazing tool. Okay, so I have my poppy parade out. I've got my dauber. They fit on your finger just perfect, except mine's, you know, sausage fingers, so we've got little rolls coming out, but that's okay. And we're just going to ink it up, put the ink on our dauber. Okay, ready for the cool part? Check this out. Can you guys see the wish? Coming out, check that out. So cool how the Versamark 
you know, leaves the color, whoops, leaves the color um, where the stamp was in a lighter color. So cool. Bring this up closer so you guys can see. So we'll keep going on to our next color. So we got done with uh, Lovely Lipstick. I mean, Poppy Parade. Oh, I should have used Lovely Lipstick, not Poppy Parade. Whoops. Ha! Sorry, guys. I really should have used Lovely Lipstick. I used Poppy Parade instead, but hey, at least it was in the same color family. Okay, so here is our Grapefruit Grove. Okay, and we'll go on to our Pineapple Punch. Oh, Karen, yeah, if you have long nails, it might be a problem with the daubers, but you can also hold them like this. You don't have to stick your finger in it. Still works. Okay, so sideways. And our pineapple punch. Isn't this the coolest technique? I love learning new things, and this just caught my eye, and I was like, I have to learn this and try it. But I did. I thought the Versamark was just going to smear when I rubbed it with the dauber, but it doesn't. It stays, it's so cool. So here we go with our Call Me Clover. Just like so, okay. And then we have our Blueberry Bushel. So um, I didn't try the other sponges, I just tried the daubers, but when I was looking at the Artisan's um, blog post about this, she said she tried the sponges and they didn't work, it was just a hot mess, and that the daubers were more accurate. So that is why I went with the daubers, and I'm so glad I did because it's so easy to apply the colors. Now, the other thing she recommended doing is taking the paper towel afterwards and just kind of brushing off any of the extra color. So, any of the extra ink. So that's what I did, I just brushed off the extra ink. Can you guys see that? How cool is that? And I love rainbows. I'm a sucker for rainbows. Okay, so then to make our little label, our little birthday label, I took a piece of cardstock. So I did pineapple punch, but remember I ran out of that ribbon, so we're gonna try the Call Me Clover. And this punch is another celebration coordination product just like the more than word stamp set and it is also only available through the end of march so super sad but i love punches i'm a punchaholic and this label is really cute so it's only available through today you guys ah panic okay so we have our wishes and i'm going to stamp the wishes on this piece of cardstock in Call Me Clover. So Call Me Clover on Call Me Clover. Just stamp that right in the center, like so, okay? Now, we are going to emboss, and I know it's kind of hard to see on the yellow, but I embossed birthday in white powder, in white embossing powder, over the wishes. So, to do this, the best way, this took some trial and error, you guys. So this I'm going to teach you so you guys don't have to do the trial and error. Um, you need to run your embossing buddy over your stamped image before you do the white because if your ink is wet, the embossing powder will stick to it. So just take your embossing buddy and run it over the word so that it won't stick. Okay, then we'll take our birthday stamp. I love this font. Birthday. So pretty. So we're going to take, where's birthday at? Oh, there it is. We're going to take birthday, put it on our block, get our Versamark ink. I know how much you guys like watching me emboss because I'm a hot mess. But we're going to stamp birthdays right over wishes. Okay. And then we're gonna take our powder. Yes, the storybook punch is so cute. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh no, things on Facebook Live. 
So my powder is kind of sticking, stick ha, has kind of stuck too. Gosh, there are no words for Sundays, let me tell you. Okay, well, it didn't do too bad. It did stick a little bit to the words, but not as bad as if you hadn't cleaned it off, let me tell you. The first time I tried it, I was like, oh, okay. That's not gonna work. All right, so we're gonna heat set this real quick. And you can see where the powder stuck to wishes and turned it white, <laughs> like little speckles. But I kind of like that. I kind of like that look. All right, so then we're gonna punch this out. Look how this word fits absolutely perfect inside here. Boom. Okay. Now it's time to back our um, glossy paper to our Call Me Clover mat here. So I'm just gonna put some adhesive on the back. And glue this down. I'm telling you, my ribbon epidemic is just insane. How many times I used ribbon and then it just was the end of the line. It's crazy. All right, so we've got our ribbon. I'm gonna tie a little knot here on the side. Hi, Josette, thank you for watching. And Tie a knot. You wouldn't think that tying a knot could be an art, but apparently it is. <laughs> it's a hard thing getting a knot to be perfect. Okay, you could also do a bow. I actually had enough ribbon to do a bow, which you know me, I love bows, but we're just gonna do a knot. All right, so then let's put this guy on dimensionals. Oh, is it Lisa Brown, are you watching? Happy birthday, Lisa. Yeah, see, I was thinking of you. And then I think it was Lisa Carter's birthday last week. It's like the Lisa birthday month. All right, so this is on dimensionals and we'll just stick it down next to the knot over the ribbon, like so, okay? And then the other thing we need to do is, I do like it better in yellow, I think. I think yellow's brighter, but green's gonna be cute too. Um, we need to emboss the background with our polka dots. So you can see here, I just add a little bit of texture by embossing with the polka dots. You could even do the scattered sequins, which would be cool. Like let's do the scattered sequins, which is free with a celebration with the $50 purchase. Um, I didn't even think about using that. So let's try that. If I can find it in my stack here. There it is. Here's the scattered sequins. Let's go ahead and use that. And we'll run that through. It's a fun birthday one. Who doesn't want sequins on their birthday? All right, so we'll get our big shot. Now, with the big shot and the uh, dynamic textured embossing folder, you'll need the regular plate the big, the embossing folder and then just one plate on top. Okay, that's the sandwich. And then, I'll move that back out. Look, look how textured and embossed that is. Isn't that so cool? And it just adds for a really cool background, fun. Okay, let's glue that down. I know some birthday people who love the color green, so this would be great for their birthday. But I just love that rainbow. The rainbow is so eye-catching. And again, I'm using liquid glue, so I really have to kind of give it a minute to rub, you know, let it dry. Good morning, Terry and Deborah. 
Okay, so there you go, guys. Super, super cute, right? So fun. And this technique, you guys have to try it with that glossy paper. You have to give it a go because it is so cool. With the Versamark, you can have any, any color in the background. It's really, really fun. I see lots of th hearts and thumbs up. So thank you, guys. I'm glad you guys like the project. It's a really cool technique. You could do all kinds of things with that. Glossy whisper, glossy white cardstock is what it's called. It's on my project sheet too. If you go over there, the item number, the cost, and the name is all there. Glossy white cardstock. All right, on for the grand finale, which is our cute little Easter box. I love it. So this is another one of those where you need the ribbon. And I literally was, every time I used one spool, it ran out. So I had to move on to another one, move on to another one. I made five of these for my Fable Friends class people. And they all got a little box of Junior Mints egg shapes in it. Okay, so here is the two pieces that you'll need to build the box. They're all on my, on my project sheet, the measurements and everything. Um, but I will try to tell you from memory, it is six and a half by six and a half by five. No, by four and seven eighths. Is that right? Is that what it's supposed to be? Six and a half by four and seven eighths. Okay, so there you go. All right, so to glue these tabs or to, to cut these tabs, here's how we're gonna cut. On one side, we're gonna cut up and just do a little mitering on the little tab here. Cut up to that score line. Miter the corners. And then on this piece, we wanna cut those off completely. We don't need them. Just like so. It is that balmy blue, Cindy, your favorite color. Okay. Now, here's how we're gonna assemble these. The first thing I wanna do is to burnish these edges. Now, those of you that are on my team, you got my Fable Friends tutorial for free, but it is for sale on my online store for those of you that aren't. Um, and it is six Easter projects. It's so perfect for Easter. It's $15 for the tutorial and it's over on my Square Store. So if you ever need my Square Store link, just let me know and I can message you with it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to put adhesive on the side that has the tabs. So we're gonna put adhesive on one side here and we're gonna overlap this piece and we're gonna glue it down. These little pull out boxes are so easy to make, okay? Oh, I didn't tell you where they were scored at. They're scored at three quarters on all th on the three sides, leaving one short side unscored. So four and seven eighths by six and a half and it's scored at three quarters of an inch on three sides. Okay, each side, each piece was the same. All right, the next thing we need to do is put glue on our other side. Remember the side that has the tab. And we're gonna fold this side over and lay it flat and it will be a perfect box shape. Why do I trim the tabs? So these tabs, exactly like Leah said, it helps make for a cleaner box and it helps for making the lines line up because sometimes these tabs will be wider because of the way you've cut or scored, they'll be wider than the opening and so your box won't be quite even, but this gives it a little bit of wiggle room so you don't have to worry about that. So now that we're speaking of tabs, we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the top of each of these tabs and we're going to fold over one of our flaps and this is going to be our front flap because see the seam here on the back side? We want that to be the back of the box. So let's fold the back forward first. Then we'll put adhesive here and we'll fold the front back, okay? And then we can lay it down flat and use our bone folder 
and push things down and rub inside. Okay, so there we go. And then our box of mints just fit perfectly in there. Look how perfect that is. Okay, the next pieces that we need, I'll get our fable friends because we're gonna stamp that adorable little Easter bunny. And <clears throat> I used the well-written framelits to get the happy and to also get the little cute little flowers. So I already cut those out though, so you don't have to watch me do that. So let me get all those little tiny pieces. Hopefully I can bring them all, bring them all up without a problem here. So I have a piece of, oh, I don't see the flowers. Did I not cut them out? I know I cut them out. I know I did. Oh, there they are. They fell out of the box. Okay, so we've got our little flowers. So these little flowers, there's three little flowers and there's a happy. These all came from the well said, well written framelits. And here are the three flowers and then the happy is right here. So this has so many words. This is an amazing set. This is in the occasions catalog and it comes as a bundle. So you could bundle the stamp set, the well written, and the well, well said stamp set, these have come in a bundle for 10% off, uh, but only while it's in the occasions catalog. If they keep it next year, it won't be in a bundle. You can't get the 10% off. Okay, so here's our piece of Grapefruit Grove Gingham Gala paper. Um, this is cut at two and a half by five. So two and a half by five here. I also cut out a piece of Whisper White using the rectangle framelits, my favorite framelits of all time. I use them on everything. So I used um, about the medium size rectangle. It's hard to say, there's so many of them, but you'll just find one that fits inside your um, gingham gala paper. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is the basket and the eggs. How did I make these eggs and how did I make this basket? Well, I used another fabulous framelit set going back to coffee cups framelits. You can see this is one of those coffee cup sleeves. Here's the sleeve that goes around a coffee cup. It's actually the perfect size for our little basket. See how I did that? And then one of the little labels inside this framelit set is this little oval. And so I was able to cut out the eggs using this little oval. This is the coffee cup framelits, absolute favorite. I love them, I use them all the time. Um, and they cut out so many fabulous things. So then I took the basket weave embossing folder, which is on back order, you guys. <laughs> no shock there. It's absolutely adorable. And I embossed my basket. So it looks like a weave. Very, very cool, right? Okay, now I've told you all my secrets <laughs> on how to make this box. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm gonna set these little pieces. I don't wanna lose them, all these little pieces. We're gonna get our little bunny. He is adorable, you guys. I love the little bunny. And we are going to stamp him with Memento Black ink. And guess what? We're gonna color with blends, which is my favorite thing. It is the perfect egg shape, Karen. And guess who helped me find out that it was the perfect egg shape? She is my friend from the Netherlands and she is always super, super helpful. And if you guessed Janie, Va Janie um, Van, Der Van Bielen, you are right. Janie is the one that showed me that I could make an egg out of that. She's so helpful, you guys, and so sweet. All right, so I'm going to clean off my bunny. And I need to stamp, might as well since I'm getting the blends out, I need to stamp this little grass. So it's kind of hard to see once the eggs and baskets are there, but there is grass in the background. So I'm gonna stamp that in Memento Black. And I'm just gonna do it kind of offset wherever. Okay, just like that. Yes, just set your friend, my friend, our sweet, sweet friend, Jamie. Karen and Josette, everybody guessed. <laughs> so 
So here is the grass. Let's put the grass back. And let's put our bunny back while I have it open. Okay. So did you know that More Than Words has an Easter stamp? Check it out. There's a beautiful Easter stamp here. So I'm gonna put these away and grab my Easter stamp. And put birthday away. And we will grab Easter. So pretty. Susan the Egg is from the Coffee Cup Framelits. It's this little label in the Coffee Cup Framelits. Coffee Cup Framelits, one, four, three, seven, four, five. Very, very cool. Okay, so we have our Easter. Let's go ahead and just stamp the word Easter at the top of our bunny, just like the box. I had a hard time choosing what color the happy should be in. I kind of felt like it should be black like the Easter or that the Easter should be green like the letters, but eh, I just left it two different colors. I think it'll be fine. I think it looks cute. Okay, so let's get our blends and do my favorite thing, which is adult coloring. And I'm going to color my bunny in crumb cake. I do two different colors of crumb cake. I do the light and the dark. And um, we're just gonna color around in light. Actually, I'm gonna use the brush tip because it goes a little bit quicker. More risk of going out the lines, but it is quicker. My friend Tiffany Nelson and I were sitting at work the other day and I put her to work coloring these little bunnies and she did a great job. She was giving me a hard time because she said I didn't teach her how to color with blends. And I said, girl, it's so easy. I don't need to teach you. So we colored together, it was fun. So I'm just gonna take the dark crumb cake and I'm just going to kind of outline, shade, we're gonna do just these little marks, you know, we're just gonna do some brown, maybe in the nose, in the hands. Any kind of where, I let the stamp kind of tell me like where things need to be shaded, like so, okay. And then we go back over with our light and we blend. We blend those dark edges so that they don't look so out there, right? They're not gonna stand out so much. They're gonna look really well blended. Okay, so there is our little bunny friend. I think his forehead needs a little bit more color. Okay, and I forgot to grab my Calypso Coral. I love to do the inside of the bunny's ears and I don't have, oh yeah, here, our light Calypso. I like to do the inside of the bunny's ears in this light Calypso. I think it's like the perfect color. Okay. And then we'll do the jacket in Highland Heather. These pretty, pretty spring colors. I love them. And I'm just going to shade around. Shade around the jacket. Like so. And then we'll blend, blend, blend. Go back over with the light. Like so. Okay. <clears throat> now. If you ever go outside the line, don't worry because this magic color lifter helps get you back on track and pushes that color back. So if you ever need the color lifter because you went out of the lines, you can use it. So now I'm just coloring the bottom half in grass and this is light granny apple green. Okay. And I know I didn't have to color the bottom half of my bunny because he's gonna be covered by a basket, but I couldn't leave half my bunny uncolored. It's just not natural. Okay, so here's what I did with the eggs. I did two eggs in the basket with the bunny, so we can see here. Two eggs in the basket, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue. You could also use glue dots. And I'm just gonna position these eggs inside the basket, just slightly peeking out. Oop, maybe this one will be a little bit farther up. 
and just gotta hold it there for a minute because again, I'm using that liquid glue and it takes a second to dry. So I'm just gonna pinch these on here. Okay, so we want enough space for the bunny to kind of peek through the eggs. So that's why we have them on the sides. We'll put some dimensionals on the back of that basket. I love this bunny too, Susan. So adorable. Okay, we'll put that basket right over the bunny, like so. Then we have another egg here that we're gonna glue to the basket, just right off to the side here, like it fell out of the basket. And I'm just putting a little bit on the corner here because that's all that's gonna really glue down to the basket, okay, like so. All right, now I have my little pretty flowers here and I am going to use my pick-a-tool because I need my pick-a-tool. Pushing out a little bit of putty because I'm gonna have to grab onto these flowers. And the thing is, is I'm gonna use glue dots on the back of my flowers to help stick them down. So I'm gonna pick up my flower, put it down on a glue dot, pick it up, and glue it down. And then we're gonna do the same with the yellow. And now remember, you can get these projects from today for free if you place a $30 order on my online store. And if you bump it up to $50, you also get a free celebration item today only, because remember today's the last day. And you get my free um, candles, the free little candle embellishments. You have to use the hostess code unless your order is $150. If your order is $150, don't use the code because you will get the um, hostess rewards on top of my free gift. I'll still give you the gift and you get my hostess rewards. And you guys are like, what is hostess rewards? So if you place a $150 order, you get 10% in free stuff. 10% in free stuff. And it doesn't... It's, it's intended for like hostesses that host parties, but if you place an individual order that's $150, you get those rewards yourself. So on top of getting those rewards, you would be also getting my free gift and my make and takes. So you can make a cute little bunny basket and a coffee and chocolate holder and a birthday wishes card. Look at that. So we have to put bling on those flowers because the, the flowers are, are empty in the center. So you gotta put a little bling or something in the center to see that. Okay. So now all we have to do is assemble. So let me show you how we do that. Number one is we are going to glue down our gingham gala paper. I liked the big checkered side, but you could do whatever side you want. So we'll just put this down in the center. I did have it a little bit farther down because I'm hole punching the top to put the ribbon through. So I wanted a little bit of space at the top. Okay, and then we'll put some adhesive on the back of our bunny. Now you can put this up on dimensionals if you want or you can just glue it right on down. I also put that down towards the bottom because I want my happy at the top. So. Then I'm just gonna put some dabs of little, little tiny dabs of this liquid glue on the happy and put that on, oops, upside down. Put that on my project here. Happy. Okay, now it's time to take our candy out of our box and hole punch the top. So we need to hole punch the top of the lid. Just eyeballing the center, it doesn't have to be perfect. So there, and then hole punching the bottom of the lid. All right, so then we take our ribbon, which I have to open a brand new spool of my favorite polka dot tool ribbon. 
And I'm just gonna cut the plastic covering off. And where's the end? There it is, it's got some tape on it. And we're just going to spool this through. We can go through the back. Ooh, I wanna cut this at an angle because it's always easier when you have a point. Oh, Marie, that's so sweet. Thank you. I'm glad you like my projects. I really have fun designing them for you guys. I hope that you give them a shot. If I can do it, anybody can do it, right? So now I've got my ribbon strung across here. I'm going to just stick this in. And if you need more ribbon on this side, you can pull. You just stick this in and you can either just tie a knot like this one or you can tie a bow. But then you have an adorable treat box with Easter candy. Look how cute that is. Happy Easter. So you guys, I hope you love this stamp set as much as I do and see how versatile it is and how much you can get for it, like how much out of it that you can get. It is absolutely fun to play with. It has so many other great sentiments to use all year round. Um, and I hope you were inspired to create some fun projects using this stamp set. Make sure you go on and place your order today. Use my host code. It asks you at the end of the order if you want, if you have a rewards code, put my reward in, my reward code in, get your free gift. Today's the last day for a lot of things. Don't miss out. And if you're not sure what you're gonna miss out on, message me and I'll tell you. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.